welcome back. We are on day 21, look at that, of our 30 days of watercolors, tips and tricks. 21, you guys, we're getting there. It's pretty awesome. So today is called Horizon Line or Large Shapes, which is a weird long title. And this is what we're going to paint. Isn't that kind of cute? See how it's got a cupcake with shadow with strawberry on top. Uh, simple but adorable. You can use it for birthday cards. You can use it on like gift tags and stuff like that. So thought that one would be cute for today. We need our regular watercolor supplies. So I've got my set of paints here and today I've just got paper towel. I need to grab another towel. I love using a towel instead. I have got a um, size 10 round watercolor brush. I've got a regular pencil, an ultra fine point Sharpie, and a kneaded eraser. I've got a three inch by three inch square of cold press watercolor paper. You might like to have a little spray bottle. It's just nice to use with our paints. And I like to have a craft heat gun as well, or like an old hair dryer. We will be kind of going back and forth with drying this one. So make sure you have got a candle, maybe you have a drink and you're cozy. And we will talk today about day 21 and it's weird, strange title. <laughs> okay. So, I get it, it is kind of weird. Um, but I will just, first I'll read it to you and then we'll talk about it. So day 21, horizon line or large shapes. When starting a sketch, try to either start by finding a horizontal line or by finding large shapes within your subject. Then use those to guide you as you go. Now, that's pretty much all the information you need, right? But yeah, the reason I chose this title is because that is how I start basically any sketch when I'm teaching or when I'm doing it on my own. And when I go and I sketch out in person, like I was just at the bridge the other day and I was painting, I always try to find a horizon, a horizontal line. Like if you just think whatever line you can find that's actually straight, not crooked, right? and start with that. Or if you can find large shapes, that's a great way too. And today's um, design is small and simple, right? But it does have a horizontal line and it does have some large shapes that we can find and then kind of go from there. So it's interesting to teach like sort of big concepts with little small cute art, but I think it works. We're making it work. So if you've got everything, let's get to it. I always feel bad for you when we've got these super long intros. So we're going to keep it short today. We'll start with observing. Horizontal line right here. Um, sort of a smile on the bottom of a cupcake, right? That nice soft curve. Wavy line. We can find some different shapes within. Um, and it's kind of a simple one. We do have that uh, ink outline at the end, which I think is great. And some things that I think might be nice features are that we have a shadow, Maybe a little bit of darkness on this side of the cupcake liner, a little bit of darkness over here on the brown cupcake, and a little bit of darkness on the bottom of the strawberry as well. My husband's working outside. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but hopefully not. <laughs> um, and we've got some sprinkles, and the ink work on the sprinkles is just sort of on one side of it, and it helps sort of reinforce shadow. So that's it, and we're going to begin. And you guessed it, we're gonna start with <laughs> either this line or large shapes. Whenever there's a line, I do that first. And if I were to lay my finger down, it's basically there. So I just mark it, turn your paper, and we're gonna go like this and just get that line on there. So my line is imperfect and I don't care. We don't worry about that. Uh, and this is one cupcake, one sort of large item. So we do kind of wanna make it's centered-ish. You can tell mine is not quite right and that's okay. You can kind of go like, I think this is center and mark a dot and, and use that as like a guide or like, do you see this? Before I get my large shape in, I can first kind of make sure that I've got equal space on the sides. So it's gonna come down a little bit. This is our first sort of large shape. And a lot. I think a better example would be a bird and finding the round circle of the body, the round circle of the head and connecting your lines. But um, but this one works as well and it's got this line and it just kind of keeps it easy for us today. I think I've been making you guys do some hard stuff. So this is a decent start and then I wanna wiggle this line up and down, up and down, somewhat even until I get to the other side. I didn't say it today, but let's press very lightly with our pencil so we can easily erase, which means we can just feel really free with our sketching today. We will move that line if we want to. It might be too wiggly, I don't know. I might want it more jagged. 
But for now, we're gonna find, this is the next shape actually, is look at it, it's the top of a cupcake, but it really does round all the way out. And you can do that if you want to, curve these sides and round it out, but you know we'll be erasing that. So that's up to you. But that is the large shape, and that's what gives us these curves on either side. Who knows if they're exactly the same, right? Cupcakes don't always turn out the way we anticipate. <laughs> and now look at this frosting. It's a cloud, large shape, right? So I'm going to kind of just lightly with my pencil get in here and start. I'm actually going to start the bottom, come around like this. And I want to make sure it's going to be tall enough that I can fit a giant strawberry. So look how high we want it to come. Maybe I'll put a dot. I want to get all the way up to there. Okay, so curving it, another little tuft of our cloud and coming up. Now, because we're doing large shapes, that's our day, that's our title, is horizon line or large shapes, we're just gonna finish this thing off. That's our large shape. We know we'll be erasing. And from here, we can place our strawberry right on it. Strawberries are made up of, of shapes as well. I mean, look at this, it's like a rounded top to it. What if I just find the shape in the strawberry and then kind of brought it down from there? See, even in a strawberry, and that helps you get this roundness on top versus your strawberry could have looked like this and it wouldn't have roundness. It doesn't matter. I mean, strawberries can look any way and they do look any way, but that can help you. And then at the top of the strawberry, we want some leaves. So they're gonna sort of start in the middle of that curve, sort of top center, and they're gonna come out and away all back to the same space. They are all meeting at that center spot. I think that's something nice to remember. Uh, we're gonna start doing some erasing now because we got some things in our way. All right, so the first thing is I'm gonna look in my big cloud, my little puffy cloud of frosting and get rid of lines that go through that. I'll go into my cupcake liner, get rid of my line that goes through it. Great. I will go into my strawberry and get rid of the lines that we used to create it. And I'll kind of just whatever you accidentally erase, make sure you get back in there if you need it. Great, we're off to an excellent start. We've just got a few more things. I think we can save the dots for later. We don't need them. But let's look at the top of this cupcake liner. You remember how I said I can erase it? Now do I want to? I don't need to, first of all. I don't need to. But for fun, I think I am going to do it. And I'm going to zigzag it in more of a wide, pointy zigzag. So I'll take my eraser. And what's awesome, though, is like by now, I've got all this other stuff on there. So I know what I'm looking at for the rest. Okay, we're going to come. We're going to have them point on those sides. So then down and up, down, up. See this? Just a little bit of a wider, a little bit of a pointier. And this is personal preference, right? But what I like about it is it gives us these points and that's where we can create these lines. So maybe I find one in the center, take one of those, let's do the ones that are on the bottom and we'll bring it towards the center a little bit. They're gonna be basically up and down, but they might come out a little cause sometimes our cupcake is wider at the top. So it depends on how you drew yours, okay? And let's take those bottom lines and bring them down. Just the bottom points. They might come in slightly. Use your outside lines to determine what yours do. And that's great. Cute, I think it was worth the difference. Now this outside line is like kind of dark for mine. So I'm just gonna lighten it up. And now, you know by now, this is what we're doing. We're gonna look at it and see if we like it while it's in pencil and we have an eraser. I think I'm good. Oh, no, I wanna draw my sprinkles. Let's see what we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's kind of sparse, and I think the sparseness makes it kind of cute. So, not too many, kind of these just little long rectangles in different directions. Don't line them all up like dominoes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It'd be funny, but it wouldn't look as sprinkly. Oh, here's our question for today. Do you call them sprinkles or do you call them jimmies? It blows my mind that people call them jimmies because for sure we call it sprinkles. I grew up in the Chicago area, so. 
and I don't know, this is almost too orderly, isn't that funny? I'm gonna change one of them. Uh, which one do I change? Isn't that funny? Like, why is it too orderly? But, you know, that's for each of us to decide. Maybe that way. That's probably still too orderly. I don't know. Good enough. Good enough, right? Okay, and we're done with our sketch. So make sure you like it. Move your pencil and your eraser out of your way. We're gonna mix up some colors. So notice that today wasn't exactly about watercolor. It was about how to start a drawing, which means we don't, well, here's the thing. I was gonna say we're gonna keep it simple, but you know I'm gonna add in a couple fun things. So getting out my brush, and this is my palette from last time I painted, and I'm going to um, just, Listen, you can play with this. A cupcake is playful. It's fun. It's maybe colorful and bright. This might be a good time for some of you to really try to reach a bold red versus all of your colors being as pastel as the frosting. Okay, sometimes that's hard for us to do. Take your spray bottle if you've got it. We'll spray our paints. And we'll make up some puddles. Listen, there is no right and wrong here, so just play with your colors. Maybe pull out some that you haven't seen before. Uh, the one thing I'm going to try to do is get a red strawberry. Like that one, I'm like, yeah, all right, I probably want my strawberry to be red. Uh, but I think I'll even change all the colors from this, just as a fun little challenge. Ugh, every time I say something, I think, no, I'm not going to, because guess what? I want my cupcake to be chocolate. So I guess the two food things I want to stay... I am getting the third one from the top right for my brown because I like, for chocolate, I like a brown that doesn't have a lot of red in it, and that's one of them. Let's see if I say anything else I'm going to immediately take back. <laughs> I do think we should keep our frosting a light color because we want to be able to just glaze and layer those sprinkles right on top. I don't want to have to avoid them. So something nice and light. But maybe I make it a little purplish. Wouldn't that be a little bit fun? Just change it slightly. Remember, you whatever you do, color you do for your frosting, you need to do darker for your sprinkles. So we're playing with our paints for a minute. Don't forget watercolor is about play. It's about rest and just it's good for your soul in the process. So these times where we just stop and play with paints and find colors that we like and we look at the color in our jar, like that's good for you. Kind of makes you slow down. Um, I'm going to get into this green, but I'm going to add some yellow into it and maybe brighten it up even more. I'm not straying that far, am I? <laughs> uh, I think I'll do that, that bright green on the cupcake liner, though. And then my table, my tabletop is going to be a different color. We'll see. I'm getting a little wild here. <laughs> I don't know. I just like to pull out colors I haven't seen in a while sometimes. And sometimes you'll be like, oh, that's such a good color. And you'll start using it. So see what you've got. None of them need to be any real special puddles. So these are just kind of random puddles that are sort of medium uh, color. They are medium in size. Nothing that's real too big of a deal. When we get into our sprinkles, we'll need smaller puddles with less water. But the rest of it's pretty much okay. Oh, your top of your strawberry. I am just going to do some kind of a standard dark green for that. And I think we're ready to start. Oop, I got paint on my cupcake. Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to quickly, I cleaned my brush and dried it, and I just went in and I kind of scrubbed it. You got to think about this sometimes like stain removal, like you got to grab it before it gets in there. So sometimes adding water and then just pressing and lifting. Okay, coloring book style. You know what I mean by that by now is that all these things are next to each other and need to be painted. So we're going to start with the cloud. We're going to go to the cupcake liner because they're not touching, and then we'll go from there. So whatever color you have for your little cloud, Grab that on your brush. I maybe have half of my brush full of paint. If you've got a full entire brush, you might not have enough control. So you can clean your brush and dry it if you need to. I'm pressing into the belly of my brush when I can. And I'm using the tip of my brush to get along all the edges along next to that strawberry and all of that. Remember, this color can't be too dark if you want to see your sprinkles on top of it later. 
when you're done, if it's puddling or pooling like mine a little bit is, I'm just going to touch it, wipe my brush right on my towel or my paper towel today, and I'm going to let that dry. I don't really want any shadowing or anything. I just want a nice flat wash. You're learning so many things. I love this. Um, that's from day 15 if you want a review on a flat wash. And now, since this is not touching anything wet, uh, I can go to this one. This will keep space in between if I wait on the cupcake. So whatever color your liner is going to be, and this time mine's going to be this bright sort of neon green tip of your brush along those edges, pressing into the belly of your brush on the larger areas so that you can just fill it in efficiently and it dries at the same time. If I want to over here while it's wet though, what can I do? I can do wet on wet. So now I'm just grabbing a little bit of a darker color and I'm just adding it on this right side, just like a little. It's too much, so I'm cleaning my brush and drying it and I'm gonna just kinda blend it a little bit and leave it. All I wanted was for something to be darker over here now I'm going to do it again on the cupcake and again over here. And it's going to give us the idea that we like, look at us. We know how to do shadow. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and dry it because everything has something wet next to it. And I'm not even sure how you did yours. So this might be next to something wet. So quick dry. I think that if you were to do rows, like three, six, nine cupcakes, all looking different, adorable one row all the way across the bottom and write happy birthday in cursive above it super cute so a lot of options for this one we're gonna get into the chocolate cupcake so i'm dipping the tip of my brush into my water and refreshing my puddle just enough to make sure it's wet enough to work with and then i'm gonna get in here and just fill this one in I'm at the point where I'm like, wow, 30 videos in 30 days is a lot of videos. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, I can't believe you guys are doing them. I love that you are. Your work is so beautiful. It's, it's impressive. It's awesome. Okay, I do want darkness on this side, so I don't need to exactly lift it up too much, you know, if I see it puddling over there. But it just depends on what that looks like. I am, I went right into my brown paint, not puddle, to darken up this side right here. And now I'm going to clean my brush and, and wipe it on my towel. And with that damp brush, I'm going to soften it up here because I didn't have a lot of paint and it kind of was drying already. So I just wanted it a little darker on the right. See how this is drying weird? I don't care. That's fine. I mean, if I do care, I can get in here. Just sort of soften it up if you can. Just don't want to disturb it too much when you do so. But I like this. I think that's good. Remember, we're going to be using our ink pen later on, so you get to clean up your whole shape. So like certain things, if you're like, oh, that's a little fuzzy, it doesn't matter. It's it's not going to stand out. So we've got this. I'll clean my brush again now, and I'm going to get into that bright red. This is your challenge. Get bright on your strawberry. Now, for the strawberry, we're going to do two things. We're going to do lifting. Okay, so you want to kind of quickly cover it. Coming around this way. I'm going to first load in some dark red while it's wet. I'm going right into my paint, not my puddle. I touched my brush to my towel because it felt a little bit too wet. I got right into those paints and look at this darkness I'm going to see on the bottom. And before it dries much more, I'm going to clean my brush, dry it, and then I'm going to lift on that top section. That's going to give me that highlight. And these things, man, do they add up. I mean, painting this strawberry a solid red color is lovely. And then getting to where you're adding depth on the bottom and a highlight on top, that's just another level. You have to decide what you want each time. Like, do you care about this or not, you know? But it's fun to know how to do it so that when you do want it, you can get it in there. Okay, strawberry is wet. Chocolate part of the cupcake is wet. But these two things, the cloud and the liner, are dry, which means I can get down here and do the tabletop. So... Think about your, your paints. Make sure that the puddle, whatever it is that you have. Oh, I forgot. I'm doing orange. <laughs> we'll see what this looks like by the end. Um, but while it's wet, we're going to we're gonna add some gray right here. So 
if you can access a gray quickly, great. Otherwise, maybe make a little puddle of gray in it. You're going to want it to be a little bit of a darker gray because realize you're putting it into wet paint, which will kind of lighten it and like disperse it. So I'm getting into my orange. I'm going to start. Oh, I need a little bit more. I need it a little brighter, <laughs> which I think might not be a good move, but here we are. And I just got that tiny dot on there. I'm just going to leave it. It's okay. So filling in this whole thing. And notice I really did do it quickly. So I know not everybody likes to have to work fast. And it's like, oh, come on. But with watercolor, you do get an effect when you do it quickly that you might miss. Otherwise, I'm going to the right of adding this in here. I'm moving it around just a little bit, but not much. And... I'm doing it while it's nice and wet, but as it starts to dry, like I'm not touching it again. I just want that to be kind of a straight line. Look at that cool shadow. And now I let this whole bottom dry. And I think we'll do it with the dryers because as I look at this, oh, you know what we can do? We can get into our sprinkles, and which gives this a minute to dry on its own before we start to dry it. So I don't know if you thought about a color for your sprinkles yet. You might need to make puddles of that. But I think I am going to keep that dark <laughs> that dark blue I don't know why because I've got a puddle on my palette that's why I'm taking the tip of my brush only into this nice darker color remember it has to be darker than what is behind it and I'm going to swipe them right on there notice it's just pressure I'm just going pretty much once left to right it's imperfect it never needed to be perfect swipe like, look, this one's pointy. That's okay. If I go back in and mess with it more, it's going to be now pointy and fat. Like, you might be able to clean it up, but you might not. So it's not always worth getting back in there. All right, I think we actually can get this, um, the little leaves of the strawberry on there, too. I'm guessing yours is dry enough. If by chance anything here is still wet, though, you need to dry it first. But otherwise, I'm taking the tip of my brush, getting some of that dark green paint... Whatever color you've got is good, it doesn't matter. And just remember, less water for this because you want control. And I'm gonna just paint these little guys right here. Now, if you wanted to, you could lift up highlights on them. It's gonna be easier once it starts to dry a little bit. And then from here, what do we have left? I think just ink, no. No, I think we'll do these little swipes of color on our cupcake liner. So before you do them, let me tell you something. Well, first let's dry everything and then we'll go there. Okay, it's nice and dry and I know that because when I lift it, I don't see the light reflecting on here. And I'm loving it. I think it's so cute and I'm glad I did them differently because I think, like I said, a bunch next to each other will be adorable. You can do different fruit, lemons, blueberries. Uh, you can do what else would be cute on there oranges. I mean, lots of stuff would be adorable. I was thinking banana and then I'm like, mm, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, okay. As I do this, do you notice that this blue here isn't very much darker than what's underneath of it? And I think that's kind of the ticket here is do it, but like you could even do the same color you used and see what happens. I'm going to go right on those pencil lines and I just don't want to see a lot of darkness. I think that's where it can kind of go wrong and you're like, ah, it's aggressive, you know? And so I'm just doing this. It was the same color, and I'm, I don't know if I even added any more paint into it. So just see what you've got. But I like that. It's a little bit of detail without overwhelming that cupcake liner. And I think this one's awesome. So you can either wait a second and let this dry or not. I mean, mine's already not shiny, so I guess I'm just going to go for it. I don't do that very often, though. I really like to know what's going to happen. Um, I don't like bad surprises on here. So we're going to start with this. And just as we did our horizon line and our large shapes, we're going to kind of do the same. Um, I'm going to start with this big fluffy cloud. And you can clean things up now. You don't have to follow your lines in any way. Like, I wanted a bigger curve right here, so I made one where one didn't really exist. And this I want cleaner. I already like it better. Isn't that adorable? So now I'm going to come and do my strawberry on the outside. I want this leaf to be in the front, so I'll do this one first. And get my little leaves in. 
So just take your time on this too. Okay, here's something I'm going to show you that is just my personal opinion. Do you see how right here and here don't connect? I think they should. To me, that looks more finished. That's just up to you, but look for those little gaps sometimes. And I'm going to go here and here. Get into my zigzag. And remember, move this around to make it comfortable for you because, I mean, this is a Sharpie. It's like a thick black line. You want to have the lines look the way you want them to look, so make sure it's comfy. Okay, and then this nice soft bottom to it. I'm not going to add lines to the cupcake liner. I don't, that would be too much. It's actually one thing and it's a light color. We can see shadow. I think it's good the way it is. I'm gonna do my horizon line horizontal line however you want to call that and on my jimmies or my sprinkles <laughs> I just want two sides so somehow remember our shadows on the right side our highlights on the left so I'm kind of going under and to the right whatever that kind of looks like try to be careful with this you may even want a thinner one than this like just the felt tip pen or something personal preference and then we've got our dots on our strawberry for things like this I like to sort of find a curve so I turned mine right and then just do this curved line of I mean diagonal kind of but curved diagonal line and then go in between them and then do it again and it lines it up pretty nicely for you something like this I like it. You can add details to your strawberries or not. Notice I didn't even close that off, but I did on this side. Um, you can add to these, you can do anything you want. You can sign your artwork. And can you believe, what day is it? Let's see, we just finished day 21. We're into the, the long stretch. Is that how you say that? <laughs> Okay, here we go. I can't wait to see yours. Share them on my Facebook page, Audrey Shantz Art, with that hashtag, um, hashtag Audrey's Art Club. And remember, I'm, I'm giving some free artwork to random comments in the comment section of the YouTube videos. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.